the embodied presence of God in human form, the creator of all things, moves towards Jerusalem this week, toward his own humiliation, suffering, and death. And on this night, gathered with his disciples for a meal, a meal that we remember each week in worship, Jesus moves with intention and purpose away from the table and down to the floor. Jesus moved to the place and the position of a servant. Jesus didn't just serve the disciples for a moment, like some undercover boss who sweeps the floors for a day and then returns to the dignity and prestige of the corner office. No, Jesus didn't just serve. Jesus positioned himself as a servant. Jesus moved from his seat at the table to a place beneath the others gathered. He took the place of the overlooked, the ignored, the hated, the looked down upon, the other. He took the place of one whose humanity we so casually deny. And we know this is true because of Peter's reaction, right? Peter said, you will never wash my feet. What Jesus proposed was more than just a simple act of service. This was a movement away from power and honor and respect, and a movement toward servanthood, toward love, toward the places in our world that are too often disrespected. This was a posture of elevating the other and diminishing himself. Peter didn't protest because he wanted Jesus' hands to stay clean. Peter protested because his natural reaction was to resist Jesus' movement away from power and towards servanthood. The movement down into the places and positions of this world that we too easily overlook, ignore, judge, and look down upon. That is where the God of all creation scandalously moves. And that is where God calls us to follow. Ocean Vong's mother knew all too well the great distance that Jesus traveled that night. Of course, the work of a pedicurist isn't easy. It's dirty and it's difficult. But Ocean's mother did not weep at the respite from her work that night. She wept at the experience of finally being seen. She wept at the weight of the distance respect she carried, and she wept at the encounter with the humanity she was so often denied. Her son's success had lifted her, if only for a moment, across the great chasm created by the powers of this world that differentiate between the worthy and the unworthy, the seen and the unseen. And that's the same chasm that God moves back down across the other way this week and this night. That's the scandal. That's what Peter protests. A God who leads in love and service rather than power and prestige and violence. A God who sees the humanity in every beloved creation and a God who calls us to see the world the same way. Yes, in this text, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. But Jesus' movement down from the table and to the floor also makes him present among the servants and the foot washers of this world. Christ is present with those we designate as different, or lesser than, or unworthy, or undignified. Christ moves with intention into the role and the place of the migrant working in the fields picking fruit, the untouchable on the streets of India, the immigrant scratching out a life for herself and her family in the nail salon. Christ's movement down from the table, down from power and privilege, is our example. It is the greatest commandment of love. Yes, we are called to serve, but not just for the sake of service. We are called to serve because of who God is and what God does for us, for all of us. We are called to serve as Christ's own body in response to the love that we've received, moving with purpose and intention into the places where Christ himself went for us. And so tonight, as you wash the hands of your family, your friends, 
or in yourself. May it be a reminder of God's movement this week. God's movement as loving creator and embodied Savior in human form. Christ's movement toward Jerusalem and down from the table in loving service. God's movement across the human to make chasms of worthiness and power and dignity. And Jesus' tender movement in washing the feet of others in loving care and service. I must admit that I kind of love that tonight's service is virtual. I love that you are in your homes, in your neighborhoods, for the hand-washing rite. Because every Sunday, the Lutheran liturgy ends with ascending, a movement from our gathering at the table out into the world, a movement from the place where God transforms the community into the very body of Christ sent out into the world, sent down from the table in service and love. And tonight, you are already scattered in your unique communities and neighborhoods. And so as you go out in silence tonight, and as you move with Jesus through this holy week, you can know that the service into which you're called in response to God's amazing love is done right where you are, wherever you are, your unique and particular location and context. It's done in the ministry of presence, of service, and love for those in your neighborhood, but also it is done in tearing down the systems around the country that dehumanize the ones to whom Jesus makes himself present. As Jesus moves towards the cross this holy week, he also moves down from the table in service and in love for the world this time. May you trust in God's transformative power to become the love that Christ demonstrated for us. Amen. Now we're going to move into a time uh, when you have the opportunity to, to, um, to wash the hands of those who are with, for those who are around. You can even do yourself if you're alone. Um, we're going to demonstrate here uh, as we move into this time of, of hand washing. On this night, we have heard Christ's commandment to love one another as he loved us. As we wash hands in service tonight, we commit ourselves as the body of Christ to get up from our tables of power and privilege, to love one another through service, and to share God's radical, countercultural love with the world. You may wash your own or one another's hands now, and whether you are gathered physically with others or you are alone, remember that whenever we gather together as a community to worship, we are sent out as the body of Christ to serve as he served and to love as he loved.
united by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world, saying, Your mercy is great. Your mercy is great. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into the teachers of faith. From one generation to the next, give your church hunger for your promises made through the sacraments, and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustained land and sea crops, herds and flocks that provide food. Teach us how to faithfully live so that there is enough for all. As they begin the task of rebuilding, grant solace and strength to your people in Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi, whose homes and livelihoods have been washed away by torrential rains. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression, especially those held captive against their will, those imprisoned by substance use disorders, political refugees from all nations, and those living in the ghettos of urban poverty. Establish just leadership in Myanmar, in places of tyranny and peace in Syria, in place of war. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers until the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who are in need of it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to be forgiven, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. We pray especially for Susan Jones, Ralph Holman's sister, and the victims of COVID-19. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus, wash the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service, especially pads and the quilters that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to Serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout this church. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the one who promised to answer all the prayers we offer. Hear them now as we send them to the chat, pray them out loud, or utter them in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your glory shown in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our living water and merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for all the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take me. This is my body, given for you. Do this. 
this from your members. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we wait his salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this meal. Wash away our sins that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church.